And welcome to SVG TV's news for Wednesday, July 5th, 2023. I'm Triska Campbell with the details. Prime Minister Dr. Afghan Sars is cautiously optimistic about CARICOM's goal to reduce the region's food import bill by 25% by 2025. In August 2022, member states committed to reduce the region's huge food expense by incorporating all stakeholders within the region. According to TTT News, speaking to reporters at the heads of government meeting in Port of Spain, Trinidad, Prime Minister Gonçalves acknowledged Guyana for leading the agenda. PM Gonçalves, however, questioned whether the target will be reachable by 2025, but noted the importance of setting targets. The President of Guyana is doing a lot of good work on the initiative to reduce um, food imports by 25% by 2025. I don't know if we're going to get to it, but at least you have to set yourself targets. And we are seeing some impact already. It's just another two years to 2025. The progress is uneven, but it's, it's good that we're making progress. Meanwhile, on NBC Radio's face-to-face -face program today, acting Prime Minister Montgomery Daniel says leaders have to be praised for their work in advancing the agenda of the Caribbean community CARICOM over the last 50 years, including its founding fathers. We have established the, the, the oneness of the Caribbean region and successive governments continue to work on the behalf of the people of the region improving the life and livelihoods of all our people. Yes. So again, one would have to really congratulate the, the, the various prime ministers who have acted very much on the behalf of, of our people of the Caribbean over the last 50 years. You know, when one looks back at the history of the region and to see how much, you know, um, the history coming out of the last 200 years where our people were divided by the slave masters. And even in the case of the the people who the British met here, yeah. to which they robbed the people of a language, a culture, and they dispersed or for parents out of this country to other lands. And I'm sure it's on that backdrop is that our original leaders understanding our past history, have been really working hard to ensure that there is a oneness within the region. And really, I, I really want to commend the, the, the leaders for taking the stand of that regional integration over the years. So, Prime Minister is in Trinidad. What is outstanding at this meeting is that, of course, the meeting should be establishing a national holiday. Mm -hmm. There will be a special flag raising for, for the ceremony. And equally on the agenda is the discussion of the CARICOM Agri-Food Security which is critical to the region. So the leaders continue to work on our behalf, and kudos to them. Prime Minister Gonzalez returned to the state tomorrow, and so even in his absence, of course, the work of the government continues. Taiwan's ambassador to SVG, His Excellency Peter Shai Lilan, is expected to say goodbye to St. Vincent next week, returning home to Taiwan to take up official duties. Acting Prime Minister Montgomery Daniel on radio today said Ambassador Lan during his time of service in SVG has become a household name and thanked him for his outstanding service to the government and people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. You know, two years has two years have really gone by very fast. But I can say to you that um, for that two year period, St. Vincent and the Grenadines would have benefited tremendously from his mission here in St. Vincent. So his mission is completed, and he leaves St. Vincent on around the 12th of July, 2023. I really want to wish him well, of course, 
there was a ceremony for him, both at his, there was a ceremony at his, at his residence and, of course, at the residence of the Prime Minister. That in itself shows the respect that this government has, not only for Peter Lan as the ambassador, but <clears throat> for the country Taiwan that we have had an outstanding relationship with for the last uh, 42 years. You know, it's, it's remarkable. Yeah. I recall when the relationship was established in 1981, I was an extension officer with the Ministry of Agriculture then, and today I play a different role in the government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines 42 years later. So, Ambassador Peter Lan, of course, let me wish you all the best in your future endeavors. And I know that St. Vincent is embedded deep into your heart. And so, you would all, I know you'd always remember St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And, and as I had some personal discussions with you, Whenever it's possible, you would always set foot on St. Vincent, the soil of St. Vincent and the Grenadines again. So thank you very much, Peter Land. And uh, may God go with you, and uh, I wish you all the best as you take up your new post. Thank you very much. Ambassador Lan will be replaced by Ambassador Fiona Fanna. Minister of Tourism and Culture Carlos James says the government of SVG continues to enhance a number of beaches across the country to boost the local tourism sector and increase visitor arrivals to the destination. Minister James was addressing the opening ceremony of the Villa Beach Recreational Facility on Monday. The important aspect of this facility, it has not just bathrooms or change rooms, but there are also showers where you can come and you, after taking a soak, you can rinse off the salt water. There's a fresh water shower, several fresh water showers here. There is going to be a vending kiosk, an area to facilitate artisans, and of course a lounge area where persons can also enjoy um, off of the beach, but a neighboring facility to enjoy the ambience of this Villa Beach area. All of these things which we thought were important to the modern design of this facility, we will utilize this as a benchmark going forward as we continue to develop other sites and facilities across St. Vincent and the Grenadines relating to the tourism product. No doubt in the minds of our development planners, the resources that we allocate for tourism and we are very grateful for the continued support of the Republic of China on Taiwan. Speaking on the sewage and water drainage from the facility, Minister James said the building is environmentally friendly. The sewage system here is one that was developed. There's a pump system designed by a junior engineer in the Ministry of Transport and Works. And that has a vacuum system that allows for an impeller to push the waste to a reserve tank so there's not going to be any seepage or leakage into the water here or the water tabled water bed that is closely connected to the bungering of the facility that is one of the important things i i would highlight of this facility i am hoping that most facilities in the very not too distant future, we can move to have them going fully green. The minister outlined other tourism sites across the country that the ministry is seeking to enhance. And I want to speak to a few sites which we have here marked for our development. We have at least two petroglyph parks which we have to uh, develop, properly enhance and develop in Leyu as well as Argyle. We have the site at Dorsetra Hill, where we normally gather March 14th at the Obelisk, 
we have to, in fact, incorporate within that site uh, changing room facilities, uh, an interpretation center. And of course, on the Leeward Corridor, we're looking at sites in Richmond, in Trumaca Bay, Ford Enhancements in Cumberland, uh, Mong Twin, and of course in Leu as well. We intend to, at Jackson Bay, look at some further development. All of these sites across the country, they're going to require a lot of resources, a lot of technical support. And when I say technical support, not just in the architecture and the designs, but also to incorporate ways in which we can reduce the exposure of waste to the environment and ways in which we can utilize renewable resources. A three-day Dashin Validation Upgraded Strategy Workshop commenced here on Tuesday, July 4th, 2023 at the Methodist Church Hall. The opening ceremony saw farmers across St. Vincent and the Grenadines in attendance, along with senior technical staff of the Ministry of Agriculture. The aim of the session is to provide farmers with a roadmap to achieve viable business models in exploring new markets for Dashin production. In presenting a historical context of trading practices, Minister of Agriculture, Forestry, Fisheries, Rural Transformation, Industry and Labor, Saboto Siza, explained that the vision and power of consolidating agricultural produce among Caribbean islands is to maximize economies of scale, particularly within the emergence of the Dashin sector. Minister Caesar noted that over the last years, St. Vincent and the Grenadines has exported approximately $3 million worth of Dashin annually and highlighted that the idea and vision is to establish a $30 million Dashin sector by 2030 through increased production. According to the Agriculture Minister, idle lands within the agri-ecological zone must be turned into an area focused on production of dashin, tanya and edos with a high concentration on dashin. Minister Caesar said with assist assistance will be provided to the agriculture farmers across SVG through inputs and continuous uh, labor support. He also noted that a $27 million program from the World Bank will bring assistance to Dashin farmers and will help with the exploration of excellent markets. Minister Caesar also gave his ministry's commitment for public-private collaboration by way of credit facilities allocated to Dashin farmers. He also announced that currently there are three new players within the market that will be exporting soon. Food and Agricultural Organization, the FAO Trade Developmental Consultant Jai Rampersad said after the decline of the banana industry, the agriculture industry was left with a void and that a review of the feasibility of crops and a firm understanding of the business of agriculture, Dashin was chosen as a crop to move the industry forward. Rampersad added that over the years, a number of developments relating to production agroeconomical practices and market development were rolled out and underscored that these developments have reaped rewards through the establishment of regional markets such as Trinidad and Tobago where 70 percent of the exportation of Dashin prevails. The FAO consultant stressed that having a structured direction and a market are critical components in the progression of the crop. The FAO in country representative Dr. Colleen Phillips in her farmers in her remarks emphasized that this journey is the beginning of a transformative step forward towards further growth and added that there is a need for a framework in charting the way forward. The workshop, which wraps up tomorrow, seeks uh, uh, to areas pertaining uh, to upgraded strategy and database, cost of production and production planning. The sessions are being conducted by the Ministry of Agriculture in conjunction with the FAO and CARDI in an effort to enhance the national and regional value chain through technical support. Persons can now order school books and other books 
and supplies through an online bookstore launched today by the St. Vincent and the Grenadines Teachers Cooperative Credit Union. Speaking at the launching ceremony at the SVGT CCU headquarters at Paws Avenue, Treasurer of the Board of Directors of the Credit Union, Gilbert Frederick, said that the online bookstore is a bold step into the future by the SVGT CCU, noting that it is the first of its kind in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Technology has revolutionized the way we live, work, and connect with each other. The rise of online platform has transformed the business landscape, allowing companies to reach customers beyond our physical boundaries. Today, we embrace this transformative power of technology by introducing our online store. This new platform will open doors to endless possibilities, benefiting both our loyal customers and our beloved bookstore. There are several advantages to adopting an online store. First, it's convenient. Customers can now browse through our extensive collection of books at any time from anywhere. No longer do you have to rush to our physical store or wait for it to open. With a click or a few clicks, you can find books that you desire and have them deliver to your instrument. This flexibility will undoubtedly enhance the overall shopping experience to our valid patrons. Secondly, an online store expands our reach. Our physical store, as wonderful as it is, yes, is limited by its physical location. However, with the introduction of our online platform, we transcend those boundaries. We can now connect with readers not only in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, but also across the globe. This presence is remarkable. It's a remarkable opportunity for growth and allow us to share the wonders of literature with a wider audience. Furthermore, our store enables us to provide personal recommendation and a tailored shopping experience. Frederick encourages members of the public to embrace the new online platform to purchase their books. It is a remarkable tool that will enhance your access to knowledge and reading material. Whether you are a passionate book lover, a student in search of academic resources, or someone looking for a thoughtful gift, our online store is here to cater for your needs. By embracing our online store, you're not only supporting the growth of our bookstore, but also embracing the power of technology. Together, we can create a vibrant literary community that transcends physical boundaries and foster a love for reading and learning. In conclusion, the launch of SVG TCCU Bookstore Online Store marks an exciting chapter in our journey. IT manager at the SVG Teachers Cooperative Credit Union, Rohan Murray, gave insights on how to navigate the online bookstore site. The site that you can go to is tccusvg.com forward slash store. Also, you can go directly on the credit union website and you can click the link to the top and you'll be able to go into the bookstore. So, on the bookstore, as you scroll down, you'll be able to see the various items and services that are there. All right, so if you can go back onto the main page, the f I want to show you the feature that is, I, say, I would say, is the best feature on the page. As you scroll down, you will, we have our book list checker. So you have your book list and you want to quickly navigate. You know, you have your child in grade two or three, and you want to quickly find those books. You just click quickly on the book list checker, and it carries you to the list of books. Then you can go sit, navigate from the top on the filter. Right? So you just select that, that form or grade. Right. So these are the list of, so what was selected is grade six, and you can see here all the list of the grade six books. And you can just simply add all to cat and you're good to go.
welcome to Carnival Beat. Divine Walters of the Sandy Bay Government School with her song Nation Building retained her title in the primary school category of the National Junior Calypso Competition held yesterday at Carnival City, Victoria Park. Second place went to Divine Hackshire of the Argyle Roman Catholic Primary School with Love the Children More and third place Denise Davis of the Calder Government with Gratitude. In the secondary school category of the Junior Calypso Competition, Omani Cupid representing the Emmanuel High School Mesopotamia image as the winner with his song My Time. Second place went to Kristen Christopher of the St. Vincent Grammar School with Build the Rocket Fast Elon. Third was Sheena Stevens of the Girls High School with Age Limit. And fourth, Zio Lewis of the St. Joseph Convent Kingston with Change the Van Culture. In the soca category of the competition, DeAndre Simmons of the St. Martin Secondary School prevailed as the winner with his entertaining performance, Stadium. Second place went to Dino Nefia of the Sandy Bay Secondary with Lemmy Go. And third, Christian Christopher of the St. Vincent Grammar School with Carnival Is. Here's a snippet of the winning performances in the 2023 Junior uh, Calypso and Soka Monarch competitions. Not at all, you gotta give me my chance to sing. I've been told many times I have years on my side. I gotta keep on coming back because one day the judges go crack. I watch my sister win and my daddy sing. We hope to be just like them. But my dream of reaching far, it got shattered with just a man. Was preaching evil, then I won't be there to bring the people their vibes. No alcohol in my system, no alcohol in my brain. Me see some no sugar, but it makes you my brain. When the sweet me with the pizza, you move it like you have no head. All the time, the girl be waking up with her. Here we battle. The third time was a charm for a winner in the secondary school category of the Junior Calypso competition. Omani Cupid, who participated in the competition in 2018 and 2022, and now he has his eyes set on a national Calypso crown. In a telephone interview with SVG TV News today, Cupid says his winning streak has only begun as he is confident about his chance in the National Calypso competition slated for this Sunday, July 8th, in which he will be competing against his father, Gosnell G.C. Cupid, and his sister, Chanel McKenzie, and other veterans, including the reigning National Calypso monarch, Maxwell Tajo Francis. He's very excited and great that... I finally win the Junior Calypso Monarch and try to make it in the big lead. The first time I'm, I sing, they were saying I'm too young. So that is what my song is all about. And to give me my chance on the big stage, estimate me because I am young. I just came in the business. And um, you will say, well, that little boy, he won't make you meet me. <laughs> Cause I'm young. Mostly my father and my sister is in the competition with me as well. But mostly my dad now, he will mostly run out to look for us. And he will not study himself mostly in the competition for his presentation. So I think... My dad has to book up on that and study himself as well. <laughs> he knows he studies his children more than he studies himself with his presentation. He go more run out for 
Minha mãe se está. I'm not studying in so. The Royal St. Vincent and the Grenadines Police Force is appealing to residents to be cautious on the roads during the carnival weekend and to be mindful of placing body parts out of moving vehicles. The advice was given during the Police on the Beat program on NBC Radio yesterday in which carnival activities, issues of security and traffic were being discussed by Marketing and Development Officer of the Carnival Development Corporation, Esworth Ezzy Roberts, as well as Head of the Traffic Branch of the RSVG Police Force, Assistant Superintendent Parnell Brown and Assistant Commissioner Christopher Benjamin. The, um, let me remind persons who are listening that the laws of St. Vincent and the Grandines do not go on holidays during carnival, it will be enforced. For he, passenger public service transport, the omnibus, some of them are licensed for 18 passengers, some of them 26, some of them 32, some of them 29. One passenger over the amount that you are licensed to carry is an offense. And I'm appealing to the passengers, please keep all parts of your body inside the vehicle. It is dangerous for you traveling in a public service transport and you have parts of your body hanging out. It is also a charge riding other than inside of a motor vehicle it is a tra it is a, a, an offense you can't put parts of your body outside and i am seeing it from adults and from younger persons this is from such a practice you can you can got, get injured from oncoming traffic or from stationary objects that the, the, um, the vehicle might pass close to. So, let me remind those persons again who are bent on consuming alcohol also and are operators of public service transport, you have to desist from such a practice because it is an offense. The law says you should not be under the influence of drug or alcohol. Head of the traffic branch, Parnell Brown, said that the road network is limited in terms of routes in and out of capital Kingston, and the department will put the necessary arrangements in place for an easy flow of traffic as much as possible. Traffic traveling from the windward side into Kingston on Carnival Monday and Tuesday. If you are not going beyond Kingston, you will be asked to park at the grammar school playing field where there will be police officers assisting in the parking. We also will have the light towers and we have police patrolling to ensure that the vehicles are not broken into. Persons who wish to travel from the windward side to the leeward side will travel down Richmond Hill Road onto James Street and into Middle Street. When they get to the area of Jacks, they will make a left turn, travel down to the area of the Cenotaph, up Bedford Street, down Middle Street again. Exit at Queen Street, through the cemetery, and exit at Cyrus Street, and onto Nelson Mandela Highway. Persons who come in from King Garden will take a similar route. Persons who are traveling from the leeward side and want to go to the windward side of the country will travel down stony grounds, go through Block 2000, over to Level Gardens and exit at Judges Bridge, that is at Girls High School. Girls High School. Persons who wish to park, they can park in the area of Massey, or at stony grounds. Simple. ASP Brown also used the opportunity to appeal to persons to adhere to the laws of SVG and to desist from reckless behaviors including reckless driving. I just want to remind motorists 
and also persons who use in public service transport, there's life after carnival. Do not try to maximize attending or getting in plenty of the actions that are available and then you are running yourself in the ground. Persons who are operating are the owners of public service transport. Let me remind you that the law is not or uh, will not be going on holidays to facilitate any reckless, dangerous or careless driving on the road. Now I am seeing a very dangerous practice occurring on our roads in St. Vincent and the Grandines. Somebody is driving a motor vehicle and their cell phone is in front of them. They are paying attention to the cell phone and not the traffic in front of them. I am also seeing a lot of pedestrians getting hit or struck on the pedestrian crossing. It is because motorists are not paying attention. They are paying too much attention to their cellular phone. I am asking persons to desist from such a dangerous practice. It puts your life in danger and other persons' life in danger. This is the carnival season. Take your um, your uh, your pedest your passengers from point A to point B in a safe and comfortable way, manner.